Alrighty, tubers. We've got a cool one for you here. We got a GA 550A Kawasaki generator. Obviously, probably your maximum of volts, either that's running or what, I'm not sure. But we've got two AC plugs in the front, and then we've got 12 volt at 8.5 amps on the bottom. <coughs> Backside has a whole cover on it that flips down, like you can see. You got a fuel pump, it looks like the diaphragm style fuel pump. You got a primer of sorts. Keep priming button fully pressed for 30 seconds. And then we've got your carburetor here. We're gonna go ahead and get into trying to get this thing running today. Looks like you got a pulse line comes from the intake right here and goes down below. Is that the one? Yeah. So it looks like it goes down below down to that uh, pulse pump down in the bottom. Hopefully that pulse pump is still good, but uh, I'm going to expect it not to be. Um, obviously that's not supposed to come out. This has been sitting a very, very long time. There's a little bit of fuel in there smells pretty old. I'd have to guess at least five years it's been sitting. It's funny the fuel or the uh, muffler. Muffler little pieces crimped right here to make it through some slots in the cover. Kind of interesting. Uh, let's check the oil here. Oil's full. Looks like it's okay oil. Got a little color to it, but not bad. Now, let me smell it. Let's see if it smells like fuel. Doesn't. Just smells like oil. Which is good. Tiny, tiny little engine here. Looks like there's an adjustment right here. I'm gonna guess that's your governor. Or not the governor, but the tension of this spring is how much how uh, what the RPM you get oh because that's that adjustments right here what are you then oh choke it's an automatic choke of sorts I wonder if that heats up and it lets go or something or that's definitely a choke of sorts I'll have to be careful not to bend that guy but uh, yeah Air filter box over there. Doesn't feel like there's anything in there. There isn't. Why does that happen so often? People pull the air filters out of little generators or any small engine of that matter, or for that matter, and uh, people just leave the air filters out of them. So this thing probably is going to consume oil when we get it running. Let's see if it even fires off. Let's start with that. Spray a little carb cleaner into the carburetor. Should be enough to pop it off. This is your pull handle. Hides nicely on the side. That actually runs quite sweet. Really quiet. Huh. Well, let's get into that carburetor. That is a quiet little generator. Yeah, let's get All into right, that let's carburetor. Let's the car bottom of the carburetor off and see what it looks like. There's a chance that they... Oh, no. There's fuel coming out. And it doesn't smell that old. I wonder if somebody's tried getting this running before I bought it. Why does the carburetor, <clears throat> why does the, yeah, why does the carburetor f smell fresh or much fresher with a new oil that? Almost doesn't smell like fuel. It's like got the rancid smell, but then it's got like a chemical-y smell. Maybe somebody tried putting some, uh, mechanic in a bottle or something in here well there's there's a jet probably the one and only jet and it does flow 
so... Huh. Yeah, that jet really doesn't look that bad. It could be that that fuel pump, that pulse pump, might be bad. Yeah, because this is, this is pretty clean. Just a little bit of schmutz down to the bottom. That can be easily and quickly cleaned out. go nice and clean <clears throat> I'm gonna try spraying it through the center of that carburetor one of the legs is missing the leg on this side is missing so it uh, tends to move around a little bit see in that that what I'm calling a pulse pump may not even be a pulse pump it could be a uh, it may not be a pulse pump. It could be a just a vacuum actuated fuel valve that allows fuel in when you go to start it. Because it would be on this side of the carburetor, so that would cause vacuum sorts. I'm not seeing. I need to see down the center of this guy. And if I don't have to take this whole thing off, I'd rather not. Just because these little generators are usually really fun to pull apart and really fun to put back together. So, now give me a second here. I'm going to see what I can do. Here we pull out the, uh, booger scope here looking up inside the carburetor as you can see where that jet sits up into it looks like it's completely plugged off if I can get it straightened out here there we go but yeah you can see it looks pretty well plugged up inside there it's really hard to get it straight <laughs> yeah you can see it's shiny right in the middle of there where it shouldn't be shiny it should be hollow so let's go ahead and pull that uh, carburetor off of there I'm gonna have to pull the generator apart Alrighty, so I got that carburetor off there, and I'm glad we did, because it needs help. <laughs> Bit of an understatement. That hole, that hole down there in the bottom, it's definitely plugged. The choke is stuck. It does move, but very. You have to push it pretty hard to get it to move. Intake is free, so that's good. But it's definitely gummed up and nasty. So yeah, no wonder it wouldn't run for the last owner. And like I said, somebody's been in here. Somebody's been, somebody's put new fluid in this, new gas in this engine. So, oh, it's flowing now. Must have been while I was spraying up inside it. I freed it up or something. clean let's get that that choke moving freer Ugh. spray through the carburetor here let's drop the carburetor first that's, that's a part of the plan right you have to drop the carburetor it's just I mean it must be done I really need a workbench <laughs>
going after all the... Oop. That's moving a little freer now. Going after all the little holes and orifices that I can see in the carburetor too and spraying them out. Just making sure everything's clean. Or cleaner. If this, if this was in worse shape, I would definitely put it in a solvent tank and let it soak for a while. Oh, that moves perfectly now. But it really isn't all that dirty. It's just a little bit of varnish. Yeah, it's moving perfectly now. Remind me to put a little bit of lubricant on that. Okay. All right. Does the needle and seat work? Oh, they are plugged. So that's the next part to come off. Would be the float. Rubber components swell up with the carburetor cleaner. Oh, that's flowing. Yeah, that's flowing just fine. That's cool. Let's clean everything as it goes back together. We also need to take a look at this fuel shut off here. Got the original fuel lines I'm guessing. There's your primer bulb. There is a sediment bowl all the way down here in the bottom. Let me try blowing in the tank. Ah, well that flows. <laughs> When you push the button, it flows. It should flow as well, like it, like I was saying earlier, when uh, when the engine's running. But whether or not that diaphragm in there is still good, that's that's the big question. It just depends. Ooh, it stinks. Um, depends on if it comes in contact with the fuel or not. I wish I could pull that off. I'm worried about it breaking. See what do we think? It's size 13, 13 mil. Let's try it 12. Yeah, 12 is a tight fit, but it won't. Got it up in there. It's recessed. Let's do. We'll just leave that alone because I can't get it off. I'd rather not break it. Oh, there we go. Size 15, 14. Box end fit on it. So we'll pull it off here. Let's see if that was a good move. Yeah, that was a good move. There's some old fuel in there, and it's got some, yeah, it's got water in it, as you can see there in that color, right there, and then some sediment and garbage down on the bottom. Clean that guy out. Glad we took that guy off. Nice and clean now. We will go ahead and put that back on. 
All right, that sediment bowl is back on. We'll go ahead and start reassembling the carburetor here. I wonder what fuel it had in it last time because all the varnish and stuff that was in it cleaned up really easily just by spraying it with a little bit of carb cleaner. All of it came free real quick, so. I'd love to clean out that center tube, but I don't know if I dare chance trying to press that out and it not going back in right, so I'm just gonna leave it alone. I also don't know if this actually has an emulsifier on it or not, so. Like I said, I'm not going to chance it. I'm just going to reassemble the carburetor, and if it doesn't run right, then I'll revisit. And get back in here. Nice and clean now. Check that guy out, clean it up. Got a trailer coming in. Give me a second. Alright, sorry about that. Somebody's coming through the yard with a loud trailer. It's making quite the racket, so got the bottom back on. Got everything going back together. This guy sat like that. So that means he's gonna be like this. snug everything as far as these are still moving just make sure they didn't freeze up after uh, drying up oh thank you for the reminder a little bit of lube a little bit of lubricant on this uh, choke Go ahead and start reassembling here. Probably just time lapse it again so you guys don't uh, have to watch me do it. Well, you can watch me do it, but <laughs> not in real time. As I was reassembling, I realized I started looking at that in the top and I went, wait a second, that's a jet. <laughs> Most likely a an idle jet or a low RPM jet but it is definitely plugged so let's get this guy unplugged shall we that is, that is a fine fine jet let me clean this guy off camera for a second all right so I had a hard time with that one that is so incredibly fine that it really did not want to unplug or anything I ended up finding a brass brush with very very fine bristles and I stuck one of them in there and got it to unplug ran a bunch of carb cleaner through it cleaned up the face of it a little bit and now it's flowing so that could have been an issue that's for sure I'll go ahead and screw this guy back on on here, I also need to check this fuel adjustment next to it. This guy here. I'm going to count in, I'm going to twist it in so many times. 
half turn. Uh, let's see, so almost one. So going there is where it was. There. If you guys can see, yeah, you guys can see. Just taking that out. It's it's clean. I'll spray down inside there with some carpet cleaner anyways, but it's clean. Yeah, it's, it's good to go. Can't remember. I think it, when it's after when it's after your your butterfly, I believe it's fuel. And if it's before the butterfly, it's air, or the other way around. I can't remember which. That's how it is for motorcycle carburetors, anyways. So. There's where it was. All right. Time to reassemble. Just realizing it says unleaded only. <laughs> Seen, uh, oh, I guess everything still says unleaded, even though there's really no unleaded available. Oh, I forgot to put that piece back in there. Other than airports, I heard that fuel lasts forever. I will be making a, or rather, an air filter for this. I will be making one for it. I've got some foam material. I actually just went and looked for it. Couldn't find it. So once I find that foam material, I will be making an air filter for this. But she's done. What do you guys think? I think it actually runs better than my little Honda, about the same size. I think the Honda is a, a thousand watt. This is a 550, so. so easy. I'll probably end up... Here, go ahead. I'll shut it off for you guys. I'll probably end up using that uh, 12 volt as well. That'll be nice to have. This might be something that uh, ends up going with me up to Moab when I go next. That trip will be coming up here soon. But it'd be nice to have just in case I need to jump a vehicle. Charging eight amps, I mean, isn't gonna really jump a vehicle, but it's gonna make it so you know, wait there for half hour or something like that, and it should start. So, go ahead and fill it up a little bit here. I'm gonna go put it on the, over on the corner, start it up, and put some time on it. Go ahead and use it tonight, and uh. Eventually change the oil on it. Not eventually. Soon change the oil on it, but I'll put I'll probably put a couple of hours on it tonight. Start it up and use it. Put it under some load. Well cool tubers. We got it all repaired. A little Kawasaki. And I guess probably mid 80s would be my guess for when uh, when this guy was made. It's got a label on the side of it there for anyone who needs that info looks like we got a uh, grounding lug on this side to ground out the frame yeah if you guys enjoyed if you wouldn't uh, mind smashing that subscribe button make sure you turn that bell icon on so when I upload new videos either weekly or bi-weekly Depends on what I got in the uh, in the works, what projects I got going currently. But it, hey, uh, if you can leave a thumbs up, leave a reaction on the video, you can uh, look me up on Instagram, Facebook. All those links will be in the description. Little behind the scene things going on. 
Uh, there's also a Patreon in the description if, uh, if you guys want to subscribe to that help me out get projects like this done and uh, possible giveaways in the future to those who are on the Patreon account and uh, yeah hope you have guys have a good one I'll see you later see ya bye